Every government will collapse. Every ruler will fall. Every nation will fall. Every human being will fall. Every animal will fall. Even the angels will fall. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَّةِ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ امْرِئٍ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ In one hadith, a stranger comes into the gathering of the Rasul. A man exclusively white, dark hair, no spot or sign of fatigue and travel. None of us know him. Mysterious man. He has come into the gathering of the Rasul and he sits with his knees touching the knees of the Prophet. And then he says, tell me about Islam. So the Prophet answered. And when the Prophet finished, the man said, Sadaqt. You spoke the truth. So the Ashab says, we're astonished. He asks and confirms. And then he says, tell me, O Muhammad, about Iman, the Rasul explained. And he says, Sadaqt, true. So then he said, tell me about Ihsan. The Prophet explained. The man said, correct. And then he asks, tell me, O Muhammad, about the hour. So he said, the asked doesn't know more than the one asking. So then he says, tell me it's signs. When a lady gives birth to her master, when a female servant gives birth to her master, and you want to see your masters today, look at your children. It was unheard of then. They lived in servitude of their parents. And then the second sign, when you see the barely clothed, barefooted, destitute shepherds and goat herders competing in the heights of buildings. Who would have thought at the time where they used to build with pebbles, houses that barely had roofs, that they would compete in skyscrapers. And then comes the big signs. The small signs the scholars say is almost done. There's just a few left. Then comes the big signs. How will they come? They are like beads on a necklace. When it gets cut, they will follow one after the other. The Dajjal comes. After the Dajjal, Isa alayhi salam. Ya Juj and Majuj come. The sun rises from the west. A landslide in the east, a landslide in the west, and one in the Arab Peninsula. A fire that will start from Yemen. The major signs is what we're waiting for. Then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he says, How can I relax? How can I live in comfort? Knowing the angel of the trumpet, Israfi, had got hold of the trumpet. He grabbed the trumpet, stirring at the throne of Allah, waiting for that moment that Allah Azza wa Jal gives him the permission to blow in the trumpet to end this war. And Israfi will blow in the trumpet. And the first blow in the trumpet means the end of this movie where everyone will die. And that moment will come. It's not about if, it's about when. The moment is going to come, no doubt. And the angel of the trumpet, Israfil, he's there. He's got the trumpet in his hand, staring at the throne of Allah, waiting for Allah to say to him, blow in that trumpet, and he'll blow in that trumpet and end this world. And what happens at that time? Every single creation of Allah will die. When everything will come to an end, when Allah Azza wa Jal will order the destruction of every living creature, Allah will order the destruction, the death of every human, of every animal, of every jinn, of every angel. 
until there comes a point where there is absolutely nothing in existence except Allah and Allah will call out Aina al-Muluk Aina abna al-Muluk Where are those kings? Where are those kings who thought they were kings? Where are the sons of those kings? Allah will call out Where are the tyrants? Where are the gangsters? Where are the boys that thought he was something? Where? Aina Abnaum. Where are their children? Allah will call. Where are they? And then he will ask, Limanu Mulkulyaum. To who is the kingdom today? Who? Nothing will answer. Allah Himself will answer. Today it's to Allah, the one and only. And whether we like it or not, your bodies will be pushed out of the ground. People will pop out of the ground, left and right, naked. But no one is looking at no one because of the fear of this day. And we come out to a white land and people are just popping out of the ground. Every creature that was ever created comes out. And as they come out of their graves, there is darkness. And some people light surrounds them. Towards their right and in front of them is lit bright. And Ibn Mas'ud says, your light will depend on the amount of deeds you have put forth. Some people will come with huge light. And some people's light will be enough just for themselves. Some people are resurrected and they can't get up. Bellies have gone huge. They try to get up, it brings them back. They move right, they roll left. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, those that eat the money of riba, they won't be able to stand, except like the one that has been touched by the devil. They will grow like that. You will see another person, and kids are poking him and pushing him. And he ate their money, their wealth, orphans, and he wronged them. And this is their situation in the day of judgment. And the sun comes down and humankind are in that heat and they start to sweat. So some stand in puddles of sweat up to their ankles, some to their knees, some to their waist, some to their shoulders. Some people are drowned in it. Based on the wrong that you have done. And how long will the day last? 50,000 years. And humankind panic. Humankind panic and the fear is immense and the heat is unbearable and the sweat is covering people. So in a hadith, they say, oh people, you see our situation, you know our calamity, you know what has befallen us. Let's go find someone to intercede on our behalf. So they say, let's go to our father Adam. So they go to Adam alayhi salam and they say, Ya Adam, you are the father of him, humankind. You are the one that Allah made with his own hand. Intercede, ask Allah Rabbul Izzah to ease in this burden, to let Qiyamah start. We can't bear this anymore. So he says, I disobeyed Allah in eating from the tree. Go to Nuh. So they go to Nuh, you are the first of the Rusul. You are the one that Allah said you were in da'wah for 950 years. Do you know our situation? Intercede. Ask Allah Rabbul Izzah to start the day of judgment. Start the reckoning. This weight has become unbearable. So he says, I made a dua against my people. And Allah Rabbul Izzah might take me on that if I raise my voice. So go to Ibrahim, he's the Khalil of Allah. So they come to Ibrahim 
or Ibrahim. You are the friend of Allah. You are the father of the prophets. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, go to Musa. So they go to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam sent him to Isa. And in the hadith, there's no record for what Isa alayhi salam has done. So Isa alayhi salam says, go to Muhammad. So they come to him, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu ala Muhammad. Allah Rabbul Izza has forgiven you. Your first and your last, everything is forgiven. Your slate is clean, Allah has guaranteed. And you are the seal of the prophets and the beloved of Allah Rabbul Izza intercede. So he says, I am for this, I am for this. He says, I make sajda under the throne of the Dhul Arsh al Majid. And he says, Allah Rabbul Izza puts in my heart praises that aren't known to me and I will utter them and it will please my Lord and the day where Ibrahim says Allah Rabbul Izza is more angry than he has ever been or ever will be Musa says Allah is more angry than he has ever been or ever will be Isa says Allah is more angry than he has ever been or ever will be so the Rasul comes in sajda Allah Rabbul Izza says lift your head O Muhammad Rise out of sajda, ask it will be granted, intercede it will be accepted. And he says, Oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah. And in the hadith, he says, Ya Rabb, start the reckoning. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, I will come and start the reckoning. So angels come down from the heavens, row after row, formation after formation, group after group on this plain land. And then the Hamalatul Arsh come, eight angels, so grand that humankind are mesmerized by them. So they say, oh, these are Lord. Is this Allah Rabbul Izzah? So the angels say, no, he will come in a manner befitting his majesty and at a period befitting his majesty and understand me and you cannot understand the creator whatever imaginations you have Allah Rabbul Izzah is beyond that so the angels come and mankind move towards the land where they will stand before Allah Rabbul Izzah and will be made accountable for their deeds their books start to appear First he says, وَأُرِضُوا عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ صَفَّىٰ And they will be lined up one line. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفَّىٰ لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ وَقَالَ صَوَابًا There isn't a word being uttered. Straight line. The first utterance in the Day of Judgment is from Allah Rabbul Izzah to our father Adam alayhi salam. And Jahannam has been brought, being pulled, 70,000 chains trying to control it. And each chain being handled by 70,000 angels. And when Jahannam sees creations, it hisses towards them. Angry because the Lord of Jahannam is angry. And then in this situation, Allah Rabbul Izza beckons Adam, Ya Adam. So Adam says, at your beck and call, Ya Rabb. All good is in your hands, Ya Rabb. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, separate the portion of hell from your children. So he says, and what is the portion of hell? Allah Rabbul Izzah says, from every thousand, nine hundred and ninety-nine for the fire. And as the utterance comes, the hair on the head of babies will grow gray. Your name is called. You have your book with you. You approach the throne of Allah. Two scenarios. The bad scenario, may Allah protect us. Subhanallah. For the bad, it is complete exposure. Your whole life is shown to all mankind. Everything, everything, everything you did, said, looked at, typed, everything. That by itself is a punishment. And so judgment for the bad person they start to look at their book and they say, Ya oh Allah, um, I, I have an issue. What's your issue? I think your angels really didn't do a good job. <laughs> I don't like what's in the book. I don't think this is fair. 
I want to be my own judge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His mercy says, okay. And He seals His lips closed and He asks His hands, did you do this and this and this? And the hands talk and say, yes, we did. Allah asks the eyes, did you look at this and this and this? And the eyes respond and say, yes, we did. He asks the legs, did you do this and this? And the legs respond and say, yes. And Allah gives permission back to the person to speak. And the first thing the person does is to curse his own body and say, I was trying to defend you from hellfire. It's not a joke. Because the next word that comes out is Take him, chain him, throw him into hellfire. That's it. Take him away. And so the person being chained and taken away starts to say, Ya Allah, but... And Allah says, this is a final judgment. It's over. Take him away. And this person is chained and thrown into hell. On the lighter side, you come to the throne for your judgment and a curtain is put around you. No one sees what's happening inside. The scholars say it's a semi-transparent curtain, so people can barely make out what's happening behind there, but not really in detail. So you open your book and you see your bad deeds. So you are so regretful, you're so stressed. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. And you look again at the book and that bad deed is switched into a good deed. So you're like, Alhamdulillah, and you make sujood, thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you open your book again and you see, oh my God, another bad deed. And you look again and it's changed into a good deed. So you make sujood again, thanking Allah. The people on the outside are looking and saying, who's this person who's in constant sujood? He must be a saint. He must be a very pious person. But what's happening, brothers and sisters, actually, is your repentance, your tawbah. The Prophet used to make tawbah, repentance, 70 times a day, seven zero. 70 times a day. We only feel it when we make a big sin. That's if we feel it. Brothers and sisters, you look at your book of deeds and Allah has changed them all. All the bad deeds that you've repented into good deeds. And Allah tells you, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Allah tells you, oh my servant, you are granted paradise.